Hi, I'm Ed, and today I'm going to be installing a radio that's brand new for uh, our Honda side-by-side. -side. Um, this is a TH8600. This is by uh, TYT. It's the brand. Uh, you can find this uh, commonly on Amazon for like 130 bucks. Uh, so I'll go ahead and uh, pull this out and uh, get this all set up and installed. We can do all kinds of cool things with this. Um, mostly for uh, be able to do uh, you know uh, rider to rider communications. This is a different radio that I have just set up for uh, for GMRFs. Um, go ahead and please hit the like and subscribe buttons. Cause share this video out because uh, good stuff in here to be able to set this completely up and probably make it a lot easier to communicate with everybody else uh, on the trail. So let's go. Okay, so here is the TH8600. When you open the box up, I've already had this open, but I want to go ahead and show you guys what's inside here. So obviously you're going to have your instruction set. You're going to have a USB cable with some software on here. I recommend you go ahead and get the latest version from the uh, TYT uh, website. It's uh, tyt888.com. Again, link in the description below. Um, so you can get, get started on this, but the, what came on my particular disc was version 1.2. The one on the website was version 1.7. Um, also, when you go ahead and try to uh, program this in, you got to make sure that this is seated all the way in or you're going to have uh, cloning uh, error problems. Uh, so we're obviously going to have our power cable. Here is the radio itself. Okay. And a neat little guy. The reason why I'm picking the, up this particular one is because it is uh, rated for uh, IP67. So when, when sitting in, inside this rig, for example, and you see, hey, here's my GMRS radio that I was already using, and I, I ended up splashing around in, in some mud and stuff like that. So some of it is going to spraying up. You want to make sure you have a radio that is capable for exactly what you want to do, but also uh, at least water resistant. So if water does splash on it, you don't have to worry about it. Uh, and so uh, again, with, with this, it, it's gotten a little bit, it, it's okay. I'm, I already had previously had problems with the microphones. So by putting something in like this, this is also going to allow me uh, dual uh, channel uh, monitoring. So I can have a main frequency to, to monitor as well as possibly, I'd say, a GMRS repeater, possibly a ham radio repeater, or maybe alternate frequencies uh, within racing like pits or something like that, weatherman, whatever. Um, again, I'm going to have all, all kinds of stuff in here showing how to program this as well as frequencies. Um, everything is going to be all set up, but this is going to be a, a far superior uh, uh, design so that way we can go ahead and do more things with this. Okay, so I have this set up here on my table, so I can go ahead and configure it on my laptop. Uh, software uh, comes on online uh, to be able to go ahead and get this all configured and get all your uh, frequencies programmed. So here is uh, an example of some of the frequencies I have uh, programmed in. So all the FRS, GMRS stuff on here. Uh, but if you go scroll down, I also have uh, MERS, as well as some of the other uh, off-road racing uh, channels on here. Notice I also have weather channels on there without the transmit uh, set. So um, I will put uh, links in the description below for, for this particular file. This program is a little... Uh, is a little weird to use, um, and so it, it's not chirp, and so it's a little bit difficult to do a copy and paste or move stuff around. But once you have it in, uh, it's 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 pretty uh, pretty awesome little setup. Like then, I'll go ahead and put a, 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 a something very similar to what you're seeing here um, in the link in the description below to make it a little bit easier. Uh, moving forwards, uh, again, this is uh, so my test. I have a mag mount uh, set up here, so it comes with a, a USB uh, port right here. So I have that plugged in, so I can go ahead and interface in through the COM port. I uh, just got to uh, pop the, uh, the back piece off and then uh, plug that in. Make sure you pick the correct uh, COM port um, so it shows up on your, on your system. Uh, in order to unlock this, in order to be able to use uh, everything, because when you first get it, um, the, this button will not work. Okay? So what you have to do is, in order to, to unlock uh, this, this particular radio, so that way you can use everything. Oh, by the way, not only will, does this not work, but... If you program in uh, GMRS, say repeaters or anything else like that, um, it, they won't work because it's 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 factory locked to be just within uh, ham radio frequencies. So what you have to do is you have to hold your VFO and your low button while powering it on. So it kind of requires uh, you know both hands to be able to do this. Uh, and then what will happen is is the screen will will, will it'll, it'll beep, it'll come on, it'll it'll go all white, uh, and then when you let it go, it will be an unlocked. So that way then my VFO uh, function does work. So then you can do everything. So um, that's everything for here for, for, the, for the desktop setup. Uh, again, you, you, can, you can also you know, like bring a laptop out to, to your rig and, 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 and do all this stuff as well. But uh, I'm just doing this here on my, my desk here using a standard 12-volt power supply. Um, by putting it up here, 
like this. The speaker is going to be up here up against the top piece, so we're going to be able to hear this uh, pretty well. Uh, I already have uh, power lines ran, so this is just a uh, uh, just a standard power cord. I, I use power pole connectors on just about anything, so you can see uh, some of the, the other installs I have. But this runs all the way down, comes all the way over, routes down, and then funnels back into uh, through the front area, and I have a fuse block uh, set up just specifically for this. So um, that's how I have my, my radio uh, set up on here. I, as far as antenna, I have an antenna wire, and what it does is it routes up here, and then it follows this this uh, this rail all the way back to the back of the rig, and I'll go ahead and show you where I have the antenna set up. Okay, so here's my antenna wire coming all the way back, and it routes down to here. This is using a standard flagpole mount, and then... Uh, I use this uh, little angle here, so usually if you're like a little flagpole or um, like, a, like a LED uh, whip lights uh, would mount to this. And what I do is I just took a, a standard little connector here. Uh, this is an NMO connector, so uh, what this allows me to do is, is to change out the antenna rapidly. Okay, so there's my antenna, there's my N NMO uh, mount. So I had to make the hole just a little bit bigger and then we'll be able to get this on there, screw this down. And then what I also did was, well, before I uh, actually clamped this down onto the uh, roll cage, I sanded down the uh, the paint. So this is a bare metal uh, connection. So when you have your ground connection here for this, uh, it's gonna help you create that ground plane and get like, a much better uh, signal reception because that ground is it's utilizing the, the, the rest of the frame. So the other thing about using uh, a NMO mount is I can change out the antenna very easily. So if you're riding around and you need to take the antenna off, it's just easy to unscrew. But I've also, if I want to replace this and go say from GMRS frequencies, maybe to a better VHF antenna, it's really easy to swap out. And I'll have some recommendations for antennas to use uh, down in the link in the description down below as well. Uh, it just really depends on what you're going to try and use it for. Uh, having it set up right here, it's away from all the metal. It's down low, so it's not, it's not going to get clipped or anything because the, the top of it is right here. So uh, this is good. This is specifically for uh, GMRS uh, frequencies. But uh, anything longer, like for VHF, which is probably what you want to do, especially if you want to talk uh, over the hill, you need something that's, that's going to be a little bit taller. Um, so you got to make sure that this is mounted in a way that uh, it can still uh, not get too much interference from like the bar but also so that way you don't end up ripping it off uh, or anything. If, if there is that possibility, then maybe adding a spring or something like that so that way you can at least bend down and not uh, break your antenna is what you really want to try and pay attention to. Okay. Okay, so I do realize that a lot of people aren't going to have a radio uh, pre-installed already. Um, so what I found is, uh, you know, I have my, my nice mirror right here, have all the wires coming up, and I'm just using a common zip tie uh, with, the, uh, with the bracket frame for for this i did not drill into the frame and so that way if, if i need to make make some minor adjustments i can but it's it stays right here it doesn't really move anywhere but uh, because i'm swapping this radio out i was, was going to trim these out and then i'm going to drop my, uh, my new radio in in the same location okay so getting into our screw pack uh, we have the the black screws those are the, the ones that are going into the side of the radio and then uh, hooking to the, the frame section that frame is going to be our holder that's going to be zip tied up to the frame uh, system and then the rest of this here is uh, some spare fuses there's our microphone clip and then all a bunch of other screws which we're not going to end up using because we're not drilling this into a dashboard or anything like that okay so i have this all prepped ready to go so i have my little screws on there on, on the mounting bracket i can go ahead and zip tie this this up there but one of the things i also wanted to do is because i already have power running up here using the power pole connection i'm going to actually clip this uh this uh, little, little connector off and put a power pole connector on there uh, so that way it's easier to go ahead and drop into the lines that i already have now you can obviously use the uh, uh the other line that's not a problem um there is a fuse that's on here already, and then I'm also going to be routing this to, uh, back to the fuse block uh, regardless, so we have that protection. Um, the wire here has actually double protection, so the ground and the uh, positive, but uh, again, uh, I'm neurotic about, uh, about always wanting to make sure I can move power wherever I need to, so that's why I'm going to be uh, clipping this off and using the power pole. I'm not worried, necessarily worried about uh, swimming in this, um, also considering it's, it's, it's up uh, this high regardless, so um, this is how we're going to be uh, doing this. Okay, so here is my power pole connector. Here's my uh, kit. Here's my little, little connectors. So I'm going to go ahead and just trim this off here. And then uh, so slide, so basically uh, you know, strip the wire off, uh, slide it into the connector. I'm also neurotic about uh, not necessarily liking the, the direct crimp uh, mechanism. So um, I use the solder method. And so I make sure that uh, it makes a nice solid bond from the wire to this. Because especially with everything moving and bouncing around on a trail, you don't want one of these uh, wires to, uh, to pop loose. Okay, so I'll be 
soldering this up here. And so heat this up just a little bit with the tip, put a little bit on here, it'll soak it in. And then you can start hitting it from the back side. That way we make a nice solid connection inside there. Oop. So once we have our little connectors uh, soldered and uh, perfect, and uh, once they cool down, it's just a matter of looking, checking your orientation and then slide it in there and uh, listening for the click. All right. Okay, all ready and set. So I can go ahead and take this back out and plug this in. I'll go ahead and hook up my antenna and my uh, power, and then I'll go ahead and zip, uh, get the uh, zip ties ready to go on this. So it's just a, just a large zip tie. I was just doing a loop. I use each one of these holes uh, coming back um, and then just Loop that up, and that's how I mount to mount to the bar. So if you go through this here, and then come from go in the back side, and there, it will push the whole unit slightly forward. So that way, the bar sits right here. So that way, it, uh, the back side won't rub against the windshield. Okay, so here is my install. I've got this all set up. So I use the uh, zip tie method uh, up to the top. So uh, it's I mean it'll wiggle just a little bit, but uh, it's not going to come off. So and then I routed my my uh, microphone cable up and over through the back side of this, uh, this uh, clamp for the, for the roof. And then I just took my little microphone connector and I just zip tied it up here. And so this way the microphone sits up here, it's up and out of the way. I can still grab it, I can pull it down, I can use it as needed. Here's my testing one, two, three. There's my home repeater, uh, that's GMRS. And then I can just, whoop. <laughs> So reattach it right there. And so it's up, it's out of the way. I don't have anything obstructing my view. And uh, the, also the sound, it's, uh, the sound comes up right here from the speaker, kind of bounces off the, the roof right here, makes it really easy to see, easy to hear. We go ahead and change this to a weather station. Lower 40s, Saturday through Sunday night, rain and snow likely. And that's only half volume, Higher so. In the lower 50s. So once I have the, uh, the rig running and everything like that, uh, run, 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 go down the highway, I could have this uh, turned up a little bit more. I'll st we'll still be able to hear everything. So uh, again, uh, you know, monitor local uh, frequencies for like say a bubble pack and then possibly a repeater. Um, this is gonna be perfect for what we needed to do. So before anybody uh, comments on, uh, on this, yes, this is only a 25 watt radio. So 25 watts on VHF and 20 watts on UHF. Um, I need more power, not necessarily because if you put a decent antenna back here, it's gonna actually give you the gain that you need to be able to do stuff. It's very similar to the whole old saying about the, it's not the size that matters, wattage, it's the motion in the ocean. If you have a decent antenna that radiates the signal out, it gives you that gain like you have a higher power radio. So keep that in mind when you uh, try to get, uh, get an antenna. I'll put some recommendations down below. Um, this is one, again, this is a, a good quarter wave for GMRS. I'm going to be replacing this with a higher gain one that will give me a, a lot more gain on the uh, UHF side as well as a little bit of gain on the VHF side. So um, I just have to be careful with uh, how, how tall I go. Normally what you want to do is you want to stick with a 5 8 wave for the uh, VHF and then that gives you a lot of gain on the UHF side because the, the idea is very similar to like, to like a donut. Uh, it pushes the signal out towards the horizon. That's what the 5 8 wave uh, usually does. And with a nice, good, solid ground on the, on the frame here, that would do perfectly for this particular setup. Okay, so one thing I don't necessarily like about this particular install is the antenna connect connection um, hitting the uh, windshield, especially when uh, this thing uh, opens and closes a little bit. So if this does open, I'm not too, too worried because the, the wire connectors that are up and around here, I'm gonna go ahead and zip tie those down. But this antenna connection, when the windshield is closed, it ends up pushing on it. And I don't necessarily like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get a, a 90 degree angle. It's gonna stick this off to the side. It's gonna bring this, this clearance down and take that stress off of the, uh, the wire. I'll put a link in the description again uh, down below. So one thing that might be a good idea before you get out on the trail is to make sure that you get your obviously get your frequencies uh, all uh, dialed in. So here's uh, you know, those two GMRS uh, repeaters as well as a uh, FRS uh, channel specifically for you know, bubble wrap radios. So I'm gonna go ahead and push the function button and then hit the lock button. So now I have that little icon up there. So if I reach over there and I start pushing on stuff, it doesn't do anything. Okay. The only thing you can do is change the AB. 
that's the this button right here and it changes from the uh, bottom to the top or vice versa so whichever wherever this arrow is that's the uh, the one that you're gonna be transmitting on so if you hear a signal coming in for example and you want to go ahead and transmit on that one you may have to switch uh, hit the AB button or the one on the on the microphone when it's locked this button works and then the obviously the transmit button works okay so you got to make sure that uh, you do this that way uh, you don't accidentally bump channels and change change everything and then it makes the radio useless because you're listening on the wrong channel on ride one of the advantages of putting the microphone up in the top uh, left corner from where the driver's seat is is if i'm standing outside of the vehicle and i need to go ahead and uh, use the radio because I have maybe an auxiliary switch and the radio is on even though the engine is offline Usually you won't have an auxiliary battery for that. I can easily reach up and pull the microphone down and I can use the, the radio Okay, so that about wraps up the install. Uh, this was a TYT TH 8600 um, uh, radio. It's a dual bander um, so this should uh, again should do nicely. Um, so I've got my radio all set up, got my microphone up and out of the way, ready to go for a ride, and be able to uh, talk to everybody that uh, that I need to. If this was helpful, don't forget to uh, smash that like and subscribe buttons down below. And as always, happy riding.